Welcome all. Today we have the next installment of the webinar series hosted by the American Rock Mechanics Association and our ARMA Underground Storage and Utilization Technical Community. Today we are privileged to have Dr. William Apoma to give his webinar today. He is a research engineer and section head of the Reservoir Evaluation and Computational Technologies Division at the Petroleum Research Center in New Mexico Tech, Socorro, New Mexico. He is adjunct faculty to the Petroleum Engineering Department at New Mexico Tech. Dr. Poma is also a lecturer at Kwame Karuma University of Science and Technology in Ghana. He is the principal investigator of two U.S. Department of Energy sponsored projects, including the San Juan Basin Carbon Safe Phase Three project, on which he will speak today, and the Subsurface Stress Prediction Project. He is a co-lead of the Simulation Working Group for the Southwest Regional Partnership on Carbon Sequestration. He is the program chairperson of the SBE Roswell section. He has published over 40 papers, mostly in the areas of enhanced soil recovery and CO2 storage modeling and optimization. Dr. Mpoma earned his bachelor's degree in petroleum engineering from Kwame Nuruma University in Ghana. He received his MS and PhD degrees from New Mexico Tech. He recently has received recognition for one of the most cited articles in Energy and Fuels ACS Journal. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Ampola for this words. Okay, so thanks so much for joining today's talk. And thanks to ARMA for inviting us to talk about our exciting project. So like Rich said, uh, this, uh, this talk is going to be on the San Juan Basin Carbon Safe Phase 3 project, uh, which is part of the five projects DOE selected to go in to the phase three of the carbon safe program. So the outline of my presentation, I'll give a brief overview of our project, uh, the main project objectives, which runs through almost all the uh, five selected projects. And I'll focus more on the uh, San Juan uh, Basin. I'll talk to you about the coal fire plant that um, Enchant Energy LLC plans to uh, retrofit that to put a capture unit on. And um, also I'll introduce you to the geology of the San Juan Basin, some accomplishments or the work that we've done up until date and the summary and our next steps. So for the overview of our project, I am say that uh, we just started the project in October, 2020. So first October, that is when we started the project. Um, the project do have uh, a funding, DOE funding of, of $17 million. And uh, we do have our industrial partners and also New Mexico Tech uh, and you, our partners, you know, University of Utah and others contributing to about $4.3 million in cost share. And uh, if you look at the cost share numbers, it tells you the commitment of uh, uh, industrial partner in Enchant Energy LLC contributing over $1 million to uh, the project. So it tells you um, the enthusiasm and the commitment to be able to still help the San Juan Generating Station to still be in business, uh, talking about the loss of jobs and all of that. So uh, we are very excited to partner with them for them to be able to achieve the vision. And we as a researchers, we are interested in um, helping to reduce the carbon emissions. So it is a win-win for both partners. And uh, let me also stress that DOE in 2016 sponsored about 13 projects to go through phase one, which was a pre-feasibility study uh, to see whether the selected site can uh, store CO2 and the uh, and also they sponsored six projects to go into phase two. That was that is more into the feasibility study, more advanced work uh, of the site characterization. And in 2020, DOE selected five of these projects. And like I'm showing you here, we at New Mexico Tech and our partners, we do have some of our partners that went into phase one of the project, but. Uh, for this team, we did not go through phase one and phase two. But like I said, 
with the energy coming on board, uh, we felt that uh, we do have a very strong case. So we try to put up a team together and you can see <clears throat> the team here, I'll show you the full list of our team that work tirelessly to be able to compete. And uh, before you can submit to phase three of the project, you should be able to do the work that is required from phase one and phase two. So it tells you how much work that we did uh, to be able to, uh, uh, to even qualify to apply for the phase three of the uh, carbon safe, into the carbon safe pro program. So I'll, if, on this slide, I'm showing you the entities that really work tirelessly, you know, for us to be able to put in the application. We do have New Mexico Tech, that is New Mexico Institute of Mining and Technology as the leading institution. And uh, when you come to New Mexico Tech, we do have two uh, research, research institutions within um, the New Mexico Tech. So we do have the PRC, which is the Petroleum Recovery Research Center as the lead on this project. And uh, we do have the New Mexico Bureau of Geology, University of Utah. The University of Utah has been a partner of New Mexico Tech for several years, since 2000, and, yeah, since the 2000s. So, and the uh, University of Utah went into the phase one of the project where New Mexico Tech collaborated with them on that. So they are a very good partner with us and uh, we work on several projects together. And Enchant Energy, like I said, the uh, CEO, the Chief Operating Officer, I believe is on the call today. So if you have any operational questions about uh, the, the entire project, you can ask questions on that and uh, he can chime in if, uh, if necessary. And we are also privileged to have the two national labs in the state of New Mexico, Los Alamos National Lab and Sandia National Labs also contributing to this. We have University of New Mexico, University of Wyoming within college. And we do have uh, <clears throat> other industrial partners as well, Hook Up Energy, giving us tremendous support, uh, giving us access to their uh, um, uh, lease to be able to drill our wells and even for a future uh, carbon sequestration program. And we do have Robert <clears throat> L. Bayless product, uh, producer, Slam J, Jolex, and we do have some contractors too. We do have uh, <clears throat> contractors that have significant knowledge in geomechanics, Tom, Bratton, and uh, we do have marketing strategies as well. And Sajid and Landy also uh, helping us with some of our NEPO work. So if you look at it, you see that we do have a tremendous amount of team, you know, uh, to be able to help us to achieve the objectives that we're trying to push for here. And yeah, I'm showing you more or less the organizational chat, how each of the institutions is going to help us towards um, achieving the ultimate goal of the project. <clears throat> and talking about all the teams, so we do have about 16 16 teams. And uh, if you look at the total number, we do have about 50 research engineers and scientists, you know, faculty professors uh, contributing to the project. But at the same time, <clears throat> before we were successful, you know, to be able to get this project through, we also had support from the community in the Sawan area. So it tells you that this project that Enchant Energy uh, is uh, working tirelessly to put out there, <clears throat> It has community support. So during the phase three proposal phase, we're able to get significant amount of support in terms of through support, uh, support supporting letters, you know, to support um, our proposal. So we do have um, the city of Axtec, uh, city of Farmington strongly behind all the projects that is going on to save the San Juan uh, generating station. We do have the city of Ketland, San Juan College, San Juan County. And also there was Maryland, the coal, the coal mining company in the San Juan Basin. They all supported us to be able to, um, to be successful on this application. So it tells you that the San Juan generating, uh, the San Juan Basin um, carbon sequestration program do have the community support. You do have the industrial support and everybody's on it, you know, trying to make sure this project is successful. So what is the main project? objectives what are we what are we really shooting for here so for the phase three of the carbon safe program and for the San Juan uh, San Juan Basin carbon safe phase three project we are going to perform a comprehensive site characterization of the storage complex so in general storage complex you're talking about 
um, the reservoir and also having the cap rock, high integrity cap rock <clears throat> to be able to store uh, the CO2. And all this, we are doing that to accelerate the deployment of the carbon capture storage technology at the San Juan generating station. And I'll show you a picture and a brief uh, history of the San Juan generating station. And you know, so when we do all of these analysis, when we do all of these analysis, drilling, taking core, doing core analysis, doing all these work, total characterization work, when we do all of this, it is for us to be able to analyze the data and also uh, put together an application to, uh, to EPA to get a UIC class six permit to be able to construct and uh, drill wells and be able to actually put in the CO2. And we also look at a techno-economic analysis of the San Juan Generating Station CCS entire program. So we look at uh, the economics from the capturing the, from the coal power plant, the capturing unit, the, the pipelines, and also to the storage side. We'll look at all the entire system, you know, all the uh, CCUS, CCS project, and then uh, and look at the economics of it. But the whole idea is to be able to reduce the emission from the plant by 90%. And we're also going to create uh, the public awareness of the CCS technology. And I'm glad Alma uh, invited us to talk today because that is what we're doing right here now, trying to promote the CCS technology as uh, one of the proven technology uh, for us to be able to mitigate the, uh, the CO2 emissions uh, from going into the atmosphere. So let me give you a, a little bit background about the San Juan Generating Station. So if you've not heard of it before, it is in the state of New Mexico in the San Juan Basin area, the San Juan County area. And this power plant do have a capacity of 847 megawatt uh, coal-fired uh, electricity generating station. And the coal, the coal comes from the, uh, the San Juan uh, Basin uh, uh, operated by Westmoreland Coal Mining Company. So it was built in 1970s and expanded to put in all the uh, all the NOx, uh, advanced technology to reduce the emissions in 1980. And Enchant Energy LLC, a major stakeholder in 2020, they completed a, a pre-feasibility study on the plant to see whether they can uh, retrofit the plant, you know, to put in the CCUS technology on the plant. You know, when they did the study, um, the study came out successful. And even Los Alamos also did independent study on their report. And they also came to the same conclusion. But it was clear that uh, for the project to be very successful, there has to be a CCS component to it. You know, so the whole idea was to capture the CO2, put it in a pipeline to the Cortex pipeline and uh, ship it to the Permian Basin for enhanced oil recovery. When you look at the volume that is going to come from the power plant, it is important for Enchant Energy to also look at other storage uh, alternatives. So this carbon safe phase three project came at the right time uh, to also help them to achieve the vision of retrofitting the San Juan generating station. So giving you a background about the carbon safe project, uh, the, um, uh, the objective uh, of the San Juan generating, uh, the San Juan uh, carbon safe program, giving you a background of the, the plant itself. Let me talk a little bit about the geology, you know, whether the geology that we have in the San Juan basin is good enough to store uh, the CO2, the amount of CO2 that uh, we're looking for. And let me point out that the, the carbon safe program, you know, anticipate that you store about 50 million tanks of CO2 for a period of, uh, uh, 30 years, but um, our, our, our partner, Enchant Energy, they want to help, they want to push, you know, for us to be able to put in the permit application to store about 72 million tons, even within a shorter period of time. So we need to look at the geology to make sure whether we can store these significant amount of CO2 that we're talking about here. So if you look at the San Juan Basin, it is really huge. It covers about 7,500 7, square miles. 
you know, um, and uh, it is in New Mexico, also Colorado, Utah, and some part of Arizona as well. So, like I said, uh, located in the northwest corner of New Mexico and southwest corner of Colorado, and it is a symmetric basin. But you, if you look at it, the deepest portion, the deepest portion is right within the central uh, basin, and there are a lot of up, uplifts, you know, that is surrounding the uh, the, the basin, and there is a there is a huge structure. We call it the Hongback Monocline Circles, which covers more than half, approximately half of the uh, the basin, and most of the uh, the formation here are, are Cretaceous. And if you look at the San Juan Basin, you know it is a prolific, uh, prolific uh, oil and gas basin. You know, if if you look at where we intend to uh, site our characterization well, close to it, you can even count about two thousand five hundred wells within a ten miles radius. You know, of the proposed site, and over. 31,000 wells drilled in the San Juan Basin. I'm pretty sure it's even more than that as of now. Um, so when you talk of, are we going to uh, cause a lot of damage to the environment or what? Is it, uh, is it good for us to go there and do all these operations? The people in that area understands this already. You know, Oil and gas has been going on in that region for several years, you know, for significant amount of years. So the infrastructure is there, you know, we do have the infrastructure. If you see uh, the, the black line here, the black um, line here is a pipeline. It is the Cortez pipeline that belongs to uh, Kinder Morgan. So there are facilities within the area and this is the San Juan generating station. So there are a lot of facilities within the area for us, uh, for the CCS, CCUS project uh, to be very successful. Now, let me zone in and talk about the, uh, the storage complexes that we are looking at here. So we do have multiple sandstone zones with good porosity and permeability, and I'll show you some of the numbers. And uh, within this area that we are focusing, that is a lower units. There is no production going on. So in this uh, carbon safe program, this target has to be a saline aquifer, and I'll show you uh, the salinity profile of these information, this formation that we've picked to be able to put in the CO2. So we do have um, some identified cap rock layers and also the uh, sandstone layers that can serve as, uh, as the storage complex for us. So we do have, our main target is the Entrada sandstone, the Entrada sandstone, that is our main target. And we do have the Morrison sandstone, the Morrison. The Morrison do have two members, the top part is a big deal still stone, is a big deal shale uh, right on the top. So that one can be a cap rock for us. That one can be a cap rock for us. And I'm sure our oil and gas folks knows about the Manco shale. The Manco shale is, is way above. The Dakota, sun, uh, the Dakota formation is an oil and gas production formation. But on top of that, you hit about 1,000 foot of Manco shale. You know, so we do have that Manco shale as a tertiary uh, cap rock. So even if our operations here uh, is compromised, the Manco shale has a tick about thousand feet of uh, shale to serve as a very strong cap rock for us. And we do have the bluff sandstone here. So for our case, we are considering a stack storage system, not just only one uh, system. So it tells you that uh, we do have multiple options as to where we can put the CO2 there. So like I talked about, you know, before you can uh, install, before you can inject CO2 into a saline aquifer, you are, you are looking at a TDS of about higher than 10,000. You know, so we, we looked at some of these formations that we are targeting and uh, looked at um, the salinity profile. And this work, it was, all, it was all done by the Bureau of Geology. So we were very fortunate to have the State Geology Institution uh, at New Mexico Tech. So they have done tremendous amount of work, mostly in the area of oil and gas in the San Juan Basin. So we're very lucky <clears throat> to have their expertise to help us to be able to fulfill all the things that I'm showing you here. So this is one of the work that they've done and uh, they've mapped the salinity, they've, uh, they've analyzed the water, the formation water in some of these formation. But there are Areas that they do not have any data from, but uh, you can see that the target formation that we have 
we do know the salinity. We do know at least the average salinity. So if you look at the Entrada, one of our main targets, the Morrison, and if you look at the strat column here, it's a little bit different from uh, what I showed previously. So depending on um, how it was, uh, how it was, uh, <clears throat> how it was mapped, it could be different. But at least I'm showing you that the Entrada and the Morrison being our main target, do have a uh, I do have the TDS over 10,000. So it is not a drinking water. You know, that location is not <clears throat> a drinking water. If you look at the drinking, the aquifer, uh, the, uh, the source of water, USDW, in the area, that is the Ojo Alamo sandstone layer. And you can see the salinity is pretty low. But where we are targeting to put the CO2 in there, the salinity goes over 10,000. So, let me talk a little bit about the integration of the CO2 capture, the transport, and then the storage and utilization complex that we're looking at. Uh, so we do have the San Juan generating station right down here, and we do have multiple right of ways, you know, to put the pipeline uh, to join either the Cortex pipeline, or we do have additional pipeline here to the storage site that we are proposing. So there are multiple right of ways, you know, that um, and Chand Energy can choose from, you know, and also the, uh, the carbon safe project. So there is tremendous amount of infrastructure and also right of ways, you know, that we can, uh, that we can set this system, integrate the system, you know, for it to be successful. So, like I said, we started the project just uh, about two weeks ago, you know, I think it was, yeah, two weeks ago, right away. So, and, uh, but uh, during the uh, feasibility study and the pre-feasibility study, whilst we're working through the proposal, uh, we were able to make some roads, inroads, you know, before we were able to even uh, apply. So what are some of our accomplishments to date? The first one is that we solicited and gained the community and the industrial support within the San Juan area. We've expanded the geological uh, database with data on the target seals and the potential reservoirs that we're looking at. And also we, we utilize that information uh, to study, you know, and select the area that we want to put our stratigraphic well. And I'll show you the selection process. And also we've developed preliminary models and conducted simulations to evaluate the CO2 storage capacity, the migration paths within the San Juan uh, basin. And also we've evaluated the 3D surface seismic, uh, surface seismic within the area um, and also we've engaged Hillcorp Energy to give us support in terms of driven our well and even probably operating the well for us. And we've also uh, put all our uh, processes in place. You know, once we drill the well, we do have the program for our coring, logging, and fluid sampling, all that. So we are all set, you know, to be able to move, uh, to be successful on our project. So let me show you how we decided to put our stratigraphic well here or try to develop our storage system within this session. There are different criteria that we use. The first one was accessibility infrastructure. The geology was the main thing and the numerical modeling. So the numerical modeling go more or less with the same as the geology. If the geology is right for us, then we select. So to make it easier for us, we selected um, the location, the first location that I'm showing you here, close to the power plant. Now, what we realized was that it was just at the tip of the basin. So it was not a good place for us to store CO2. Once you put the CO2 in there, it will go up. And uh, let me point out that this is a proven technology because if you look at the amount of work that the Department of Energy has put the amount of uh, uh, investment into studying the feasibility and the proven track records of how you can store CO2, you know, I'll tell you that the uh, U.S. is on front of that, you know, because they've invested a significant amount of resources to be able to understand how we can store CO2. So it was easy for us to have a template, more or less like um, uh, uh, best practice manual, best practices, you know, to be able to select where we can actually put CO2. So here, the first one was not good for us. The second one, like I showed you the geology of the San Juan Basin, we do have that uplift structure that is a hung back, you know, monocline structure. And we were very lucky because the San Juan County, they supported the project and they do, they do own the industrial park here. So they said, hey, come and look at this place. It's all yours. If you can put the CO2 here, 
We don't have any problem with ownership. We don't have any problem at all, you know, assessing the location, the land. Now, as engineers, even though we are excited about getting access to that location, but we have to do the, uh, the, the due diligence to see whether we can put in CO2 or not. So we realized that here, it was close to the structure. So once you put in the CO2 for about 500,000 years, you see that the CO2 is migrating upwards, which is not a good place for us. So we settled on uh, the third one right here. And that was the one that we used for our proposal. You know, it, it was a good place. You were able to contain the CO2. Now, after the award, we talked with Hillcop and they also suggested the fourth location. They are all close by, you know, but uh, there are some uh, features here that permitting and all permitting and probably pushing the project forward, we might have a little bit of a problem here on the location three. So we moved to location four where we are going to put in a stratigraphic well and also try to put wells around that area for the CO2 project. So here are some few properties of the uh, of the reservoir and also the cap rock layers within the area that we're targeting. So if you look at the entrada, which is our main target, it has a permeability of about 335 with porosity of 23%. So it tells you, and it's continuous, very, very continuous, extensive. You know, so we do have the storage capacity to be able to store. And here I'm just doing the um, probabilistic analysis to show you how much CO2 can be stored uh, probabilistically. Uh, so it tells you that we do have significant storage capacity uh, within the uh, San Juan Basin complex to be able to store uh, the CO2. And on the right, it's showing you the relative impact, you know, the uncertainty of the uh, parameters that we use in our calculation. And like for oil and gas people, we know that our recovery factor is always a big deal, right? So in the same year, the storage efficiency factor is the big deal here. So for us to be able to do our computation uh, to have confidence in our competition, we need to focus on this. And we're going to do exactly that as part of the project. So we do, for the uh, preliminary work that we did, we use the well correlations within the area to help us build uh, our structure model. So this one, the structure model here, I'm showing you is the surface of the entrada, the surface of the entrada. And we do, the, the, the model domain is about 130 kilometers by 50 kilometers. And uh, we use the well locks, like I said, to build the surfaces. And our next step is to use, uh, to purchase seismic data within the area and try to improve our structure mapping and also try to uh, get more information like uh, rock properties, like porosity uh, from uh, the seismic data as well. And we use that, you know, we extracted about 18 kilometer by 18 kilometer from the bigger model uh, to do our simulation. And I've already showed you our target uh, injection zones. And uh, on the right bottom here, I'm showing you how the CO2 that we injected actually was stored, you know, in terms of the, whether it was dissolving the water, uh, whether it's in the mobile phase or let's say residually uh, trapped within the, uh, the reservoir. And here I'm showing you um, the plume, you know, in the side view of the plume on your right and the pressure on your left. And you see this one is after 30 years. And if I show you after 1,000 years, you see that the pressure is not building up, you know, within this area due to the extensive nature of the reservoir that we are actually dealing with. And even after 1,000 years, you see that there is not much movement of the CO2. So it tells us that this area, we are very confident about this area you know, in putting in CO2. But even with that, being confident, we're still going forward to acquire a significant amount of data, well logs information, call information, seismic, to be able to do more due diligence, to be able to say that we are confident, 100% sure that the CO2 that we're trying to put in there will stay there. And here is a, is a map view of the plume of the CO2 after a thousand years of injection, you know, from our model. So it tells you that it's not really moving. You know, the CO2 is really trapped in that area and uh, we feel confident about it. But like I said, we still have to do more work to be able uh, to 100% sure of what we intend to, well, of, uh, of um, storing the CO2 in a safe manner. So to be able to achieve all of these, you know, to be able to have the 100% confidence 
of the storage of the CO2 within this area. What are our next steps? So the next step, the first in line is to do the NIPA work where we will have to survey the area, you know, for the future construction to make sure that we are not endangering any species, you know. So there is a requirement for the NIPA work to be done to make sure that the area is safe for us to be able to conduct our business. And also we're going to do the site characterization, detailed site characterization uh, to be able to store CO2 there. And also once we get drilled up the well, the core and everything, we're going to do extensive laboratory analysis for on the cap rock and also the reservoir to make sure that we have all the properties to get into our uh, geological modeling and also our simulation. And with all of these, we are going to put it together to apply for the UIC class six permit through uh, EPA. <clears throat> and we're also going to use uh, NRAP tools, you know, risk assessment tools to be able to do extensive risk mitigation, uh, risk assessment and mitigation strategies as part of the project as well. And the outreach is going to be a big deal, a big part of our project as well. And there's a synergy between all these projects. Like I told you, DOE started sponsoring projects in the area of uh, CCUS, CCS, way back in 2003. You know, and we are lucky at New Mexico Tech, we do have one of the uh, seven regional partnerships here um, at New Mexico Tech. And then also we do have the uh, the regional initiative, the CAPS project, also right here at New Mexico Tech. So there is a synergy where we're going to collaborate with all these institutions. And also Enchant Energy also have the feed study sponsored through the UAE. So there is a synergy for us to collaborate with all of them, all to be able to help us to accelerate the deployment of the CCUS within the Southwest region. And I went and talk about three summary points here. You know, if you come to the San Juan area, there is interest, you know, anywhere, everywhere within the San Juan area. There are politics involved, but uh, majority of the local people, when you look at the amount of jobs that is going to be saved and the opportunities that will come uh, when Enchant Energy successfully retrofit the plant, there is interest in that area. And also the geology, has favorable significant storage potential, like I showed in this um, talk. And I will say that our main partner, you know, our industrial partner, Enchant Energy LLC, is a willing and able collaborator and a partner. And they showed that through the cost share and also the significant amount of work that they are doing within the area. So I'm going to stop here and I would like to acknowledge uh, DOE for giving us this opportunity, you know, to do this project. We didn't go to phase one and phase two, but we put in a case. But if you look at it, it was not like we deserve it. But uh, so we need to be thankful for them to give us for uh, giving us this opportunity uh, to support and chance energy vision, you know, to accelerate CCU as CCS um, project within the San Juan area. And I also like to thank all my collaborators, about 50 scientists and engineers contributing uh, to the success of our project. So thanks so much uh, for uh, making time to join me and listen to this. So I'll open up and if there are any questions, I'll be happy uh, to respond to them. Well, thank you very much, William, for your presentation here. It's an impressive amount of work. So uh, Rich, there is one question. Is, uh, is the target storage formation being depleted or deeper than the oil and gas formation. So that is correct. You know, if you go to, I'm sure I talked about that. So if you go to the San Juan Basin, the Gallup formation, that is very significant uh, oil and gas formation. Uh, the, uh, the the Dakota is the most one, and then there is the Mesodovia or something like that in the area. But where we are targeting is all below the oil and gas formation. So we are below, far below the Dakota formation. So we are not, we are not even in the depleted oil and gas zones. We are in the saline aquifer zones without any oil and gas <clears throat> operations going on in that area. All uh, right, so whilst we are waiting for other questions to come in, okay, there is another question coming in, but uh, I would like to ask Peter if he has anything to add whilst I read through this question that just came in. Uh, Peter is our partner, he's the chief operating officer from Enchant Energy. So 
uh, if he has anything to add to what I just talked about was I read through this question and I will respond as soon as possible. William, thank you. Um, to all of the people today on the webinar, I just wanna say how honored we are to work with New Mexico Tech and with William and his colleagues. Um, this is obviously a nationally important effort. Uh, we at Enchant have spent a lot of money and a lot of time working on this project and the key to its success is to be able to sequester all of our 72 million metric tons over the 12 years of the 45Q tax credit. And the work that William and his colleagues are doing is vital to that success. So we're thrilled to be working with them. As William said, we have a large team. Uh, we're very optimistic and we're moving forward and I'm available to answer any questions. Thank you again, William, for the great presentation. Thanks, Peter. So Rich, there are, there are two other questions that just that came in. So the second one is, do you plan to acquire dynamic data like interference test, for example, to constrain the reservoir model? Important to make sure there are not sub seismic faults. Um, for example, in the nearby of the project, we can generate pressure resistance and limit the volume of CO2 or make necessary to drill more wells to achieve the targeted volume. Yeah, so um, as part of our comprehensive site characterization work, we are gonna do the well testing, but not necessarily interference test, but we are not, so we will probably do interference test when we are able to, when we get into the, uh, the construction phase where we are drilling multiple wells so we can try to test. And uh, even we'll do that as part of the modeling to see in terms of the spacing, how much spacing we would have. But uh, we will do the well testing uh, to even know the, the fracture pressure and all of that. We'll do that to help us constrain our models and also uh, our injection strategy as well. So the, the next question here is very nice work. Thanks so much, I appreciate that. Since you model long grains, thousand years effect, did you account creep in rock behavior for integrity issues? So that is the main reason why. That is also contributing to why we are doing the extensive site characterization. So like I mentioned, we do have a geomechanics expert, Tom Bratton, and I know he's on the call. And uh, we do have Sandia National Labs, and we're going to uh, we, we're going to uh, contract Swambajim uh, to do very detailed mechanical tests on our rock samples so that we can incorporate that into our model. So at this model that I showed you, uh, we don't have much ge uh, geomechanical um, effects in there. So we didn't account for creep behavior in the uh, integrity issues here, but it's something that we're going to focus on in the uh, future. So there's another question. So in addition to regional structures, is rock injected fluid, in addition to regional structures, is rock injected fluid interaction impacting on the uh, storage capacity of fluid mobility? What RE tools was used in the simulations? By the way, surface and subsurface monitoring plan in place. Yeah, so I'll take them one after the other. So uh, uh, you're talking about the rock fluid interaction. So we do have a session of our team and all the work that they are going to do is to look at the fluid rock interactions, you know, and that is, so we did similar stuff when we were working, when on a mother project, that is the, one of the original partnership projects, the SWP, and we do have that, that process, you know, in place. And we're going to do that as part of this work as well. But as part of the modeling, uh, we use Eclipse and also CMG in our modeling efforts. And uh, we did look at the, uh, ge the geochemistry. And you see that uh, with sunstone interacting with CO2, <clears throat> there is not much reactive uh, transport, less geochemical um, effects going on there. But uh, when we get all these data from the lab, we are going to incorporate all of them into the simulation model so we can fully uh, be able to respond to, uh, to that. And also, so like I said, we use the uh, Eclipse and then uh, and CMG, but we use Petrel for our geomechanic uh, for the geological modeling, and we use the uh, CMG and Eclipse for the reservoir simulation. But in moving forward, we do also have 
uh, in-house Stomp, uh, Stomp CCS uh, software. And we're also going to use Tough, uh, Tough React and uh, other softwares that we plan to use as well. So we're going to use multiple uh, to make sure that we are, especially the, the, the aim is to do the coupling, more coupling. So we try to uh, solicit for more for more softwares that can help us achieve our aims. And we do have, uh, so by the way, surface and subsurface monitoring plan in place. <clears throat> so as part of the uh, UIC class six application, we need to prove to EPA that uh, we do have surface and subsurface monitoring plan in place before they can even give us the permit to go ahead. So that is something that we're going to do. And we do have experience from our model projects that we bring on board on this. So we do have that in place and it's going to be part of our application to uh, EPA. And let me point out that this phase three project, we are just going to draw the characterization well. So we are now, we are going to use water for the, uh, for the inductivity test or the well test. So we are not going to ingest CO2 at this time, but the CO2 is going to be into the future once we get the permit from EPA. William, if I may add, um, we're so confident in the work that New Mexico Tech has done, the initial analysis of the subsurface geology that William and I and our team have agreed that we're going to pursue in parallel paths, the drilling of the test well and the UIC EPA class six permit. We want to move as quickly as we can uh, to do that. And a second thing, just to echo what William said about the uh, certainty of sequestration. The good news is that the environmental uh, imperatives are aligned with the financial imperatives because the uh, tax credit, the 45Q, whose final regulations were issued in July of this year, puts the burden of um, no leakage of appropriate sequestration on, on us as the developer and our investors who received the 45Q. And most importantly, the IRS has the ability to pull back. It's very unusual in my 30 years of energy development. They have the ability to pull back the tax credits they've given to us if there's any leakage. In theory, under the regulations, this is a 17 year monitoring period. So uh, of course, William and his colleagues will be uh, developing a well that will not leak um, the total standard is almost a thousand years. And of course the act of monitoring and the ability of the federal government to pull back the subsidies is for 17 years. So we and our investors working with New Mexico Tech will design a well that doesn't leak, that holds all the carbon and we will be held financially accountable if it does leak. Thanks so much. Uh, so I would like to acknowledge uh, my co-PI on the project, George Elkasi. He has uh, he has been with Slumberger for several years before joining our team at um, New Mexico Tech. So George, uh, if you're on, would you want to say one or two to add to what uh, I've talked with Peter here? Yeah, uh, thank you, William. Sorry I joined a little bit later. But yeah, I uh, this project came the carbon safe tree came at the right time for all of us, for the San Juan Basin, for the San Juan County, for Enchant, for New Mexico Tech, and for, of course, environmental concerns. So uh, this is a very exciting project for us. And uh, we're hoping to, to be able to prove that the geology, by the end of this phase, we're hoping to prove that the geology is, is conducive for us to inject the amount of CO2 that's in Chant or the San Juan, Jason, San Juan Generating Station will be producing. And it might be multiple wells, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, and we're looking forward, hopefully, to getting phase four, which is the construction and, and, and injection of the well. And we have, uh, in my opinion, we have one of the greatest teams I ever worked with. And I've been in the industry for a while. So uh, thank you for listening to, to William uh, William talk. Thanks, George. So thank you, William Peter, for sharing the information of the project. Excellent talk. Hope to get update from time to time. Yes, we hope that um, Rich and his team will invite us probably into one year of our project, at least take notice of our project.